Hello and well, welcome to this talk. It's Monday the 2nd of October. Now we're going to be looking at an official government paper today, uh, COVID-19 non-pharmaceutical interventions. So and you can download the various uh, versions of this in a PDF. It's all freely uh, available. Now to be fair the government is doing a pretty good job I think of, of reviewing this. It's fairly objective unlike a lot of the situation in the pandemic which was less than objective but let's look at this particular one here that they just released just released a few days ago COVID-19 non-pharmaceutical intervention so this is all the this is not vaccines this is not drugs it's all the non-pharmaceutical interventions that were carried out released on September the 28th there you go health security agency now what the government here are trying to do are identify and categorize primary studies that reported on the effectiveness of non-pharmaceutical non -pharmaceutical intervention. So primary studies out of the original literature looking at NPIs implemented in the community setting to reduce the transmission of coronavirus. Now this is things like physical distancing. Remember that two metres apart thing that was uh, <laughs> intermittently uh, implemented. Um, surface cleaning. Uh, face coverings, a lot on surface cleaning at the start of the pandemic. Uh, face coverings, and again, we've looked at these in detail, the very limited evidence. Hand and respiratory hygiene, ventilation. Ventilation probably was the one that was quite effective, actually. Um, measures to identify and isolate those who are infectious or may become infectious. Uh, such as testing and isolation, also, I like the way it says in this report, also known as quarantine. Measures to reduce number of contacts, including lockdowns, as we remember. Uh, settings, closures, remember closing pubs, closing restaurants, that sort of thing. And then we had this, remember you had that rule of six for a period of time. Um, somewhat arbitrary, but we did. Shielding of the most vulnerable and, and travel and uh, border restrictions. So that's what we're talking about. And they looked at 151 studies. Uh, and the search date was up to the 1st of March 2023. And uh, they have done, in my view, a very good job of um, looking at this. It's a very thorough uh, literature review. Now, what they've done up, they've come up with this thing here, which I hadn't really seen this before, but it's called an evidence gap map. And it looks at where the evidence is uh, limited or indeed completely uh, lacking. Now I'm aware you can't really see that, so I've done some uh, done some blow ups of this so we can see it in a bit more detail. Here we have it here. Now what we have, uh, we have the measures along the top here, uh, measures to reduce infection at an individual uh, uh, infection risk at an individual level, measures to identify and isolate, measures to reduce the number of contacts, measures to protect the most vulnerable and travel and border restrictions and how effective they were. Now, in terms of randomised controlled trials, for example, here, uh, well, we don't, we don't see very many, do we? Uh, I'm afraid we see none in measures to reduce uh, infection, uh, the risk as a, an individual, individual level, nothing in measures to reduce number of contacts, nothing measures to protect the most vulnerable, but what we do see here is a little bit in measures to identify and isolate those who are infectious or may become infectious. Now, the purple there is code for COVID transmission. The red is code for a study on uh, lost time from work or school. And the orange, the orange or yellow is in behavioural change. But anyway, let's go down. So then we look at longitudinal studies carried out over a longer period of time. And again, I'm afraid we don't see much in quite a few of the boxes. Uh, moving on, we look at cross-sectional studies, um, looking at a particular period of time mostly. Ecological studies are looking more at populations. And again, we see whole areas with no studies. But then <laughs> what we really see is when we look at modelling, we see lots of studies. Purple there on COVID transmission, remember. And of course, a lot of the policies, the major lockdown policies, as I, as I understand it, were taken on modelling detail. So politicians, in combination with the chief medical officers and scientific officers, decided to lock the country down, primarily on the basis of modelling 
for, 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 and we, we now know the evidence from this is weak. It's not real world. It's, it's just uh, looking at it on numbers and modelling. And then when we look at what we call mixed method research, looking at using a combination of methods, again, not many, uh, mostly on behavioural change and qualitative studies, again, not many. So I'm afraid we see that most of the studies were modelling as opposed to other recognised measures of research across those categories. So I thought that was really pretty uh, pretty interesting. Remember, you know, going back to the videos in 2020, 2021, we were sort of umming and ahhing about these. Well, does that work? <coughs> you know, what is the evidence here? Is there evidence here? And um, now we know that pretty well most of it was uh, was weak. I'm afraid to say. Therefore, the decisions made were made on weak evidence. Anyway, let's let's look at the detail here. So that's the evidence map there. Check it out for yourself. Now, overall, only 19 of the 151 studies reported on the effectiveness of measures to reduce infection at a risk uh, at an individual level. 14 of those were on face coverings. So pretty small amounts of evidence, really. This suggests, as the authors rightly say, uh, to correctly say, there is an evidence that this suggests that there is an evidence gap. In other words, we don't know, mate. We don't know the answer to that one. For other measures within this category, such as hand respiratory hygiene, ventilation and cleaning, uh, studies that reported on packages of NPIs were excluded. And, you know, so, so this is one of the weak difficulties here. So what often happened was sort of hand washing and surface washing and face masks and all different things were rules of six and things were kind of introduced at the same time then it's hard to tease out which is which. So they rightly excluded those combination studies to try and look at the effect of the, the efficacy of the individual approach, which, which is, is right, because we need to know which ones to keep and which ones to drop. Two thirds of evidence identified was based on modelling studies. Well, there we go. 100 out of 151 studies were based on modelling. They weren't real world. These huge decisions of massive import taken on the basis of a mathematical model, presumably in a computer in a university, probably somewhere in uh, London. Uh, there was a lack of experimental studies, two out of 151 studies. Two out of 151, incredible. Two out of 51 were experimental. Individual, individual level observational studies, 22 out of 151. Right, now specifically... Um, our measures aim to reduce infection risk at individual levels, direct quote, the evidence available for this category is therefore likely to be weak, uh, both in terms of study design and potential bias. Studies reporting on travel and border restrictions are weak evidence base in terms of study design. Apart from two tests uh, and release strategies for which the two randomised control trials were identified, which is good, I think they were both officially funded. Um, the body of evidence available on the effectiveness of MPIs in the UK provides weak evidence in terms of study design, as it is mainly based on modelling studies. Largely, largely, I, I would say, has to be said, discredited studies now. Ecological studies, relationship between outcome and exposure at a population level, um, mixed method studies and uh, quantitative studies were done, but again, as we saw with the huge evidence gaps. Now, for future pandemic preparedness, there's a need to strengthen evaluations of interventions, yeah, uh, and build this into the design and implementation of public health interventions. I agree. And this was sadly lacking before. So as interventions are put into place, there needs to be ongoing analysis of the data, pretty well live time. And this can be done. Uh, but they seem to be saying it wasn't done enough in the, uh, in the pandemic time. Government policies from the start of any future pandemic or other public emergencies. In other words, this should be built in from any in any future pandemic, which it sounds like some people have in mind. Uh, and uh, other public health emergencies. And of course, with the new international health regulations from the WHO, which our government are not in the process of stopping at the moment, um, 
I think I think the WHO can declare public health emergencies for things other than pandemics. But we've looked at that in previous videos as well. Now, the next steps are to critically, this is, again, this is from the report, critically appraise and synthesise the evidence identified on the effectiveness of individual non-pharmaceutical interventions. So next step is to critically appraise, synthesise the evidence, put it all together. This says that, this says that, therefore, what comes out of those? They're going to do that. Now, the government the, uh, is working through this really quite systematically. If you read this report, it is quite an impressive literature review it is well done in as far as i can see um so that's the next bit to synthesize the evidence put it together uh, implemented in the community settings to reduce the transmission of covid19 in the uk there's also a need to review and assess the uh, evidence of the economic impacts of non-pharmaceutical uh, non-pharmaceutical interventions which of course were huge huge i mean I forget the figures, test and trace, you know, it cost into the billions. And was it any good? Can you stop the transmission of COVID-19? That's why we changed the poster. We used to have a poster that says stop COVID-19, but then we realised you couldn't because we're now endemic. At the start, I thought it probably could be eradicated, but uh, it couldn't. I, I got that wrong. Um, it's, an, it's now endemic and it will be for years if not decades to come um, as well as their wider impact on mental health and health inequalities mental health especially so for future reports and this is me talking here far more on this aspect here this harm benefit uh, analysis there you go. Most of what we went through was based on weak evidence. <laughs> and lots of evidence gaps. I mean, I'm, I'm sniggering, but it's not, it's not funny. Uh, we'll be paying this off for decades to come. And uh, it was based on largely on these gaps, apart from lots of modelling. quite bizarre really when you look back on it the way decisions were taken i mean, I mean what what was going on there was it i kind of got a theory, theory on this in psychiatry that there's an idea called folly a deux. so what, what it means is if, if one person is got a psychiatric disorder in a house for example um an, an, another person might have very similar symptoms i remember when i was a student psychiatric nurse there was two sisters admitted and both had very similar symptoms uh, but then when they were separated, it turns out that one had the genuine psychiatric disorder and one uh, had this folly a deux that just adopted these behaviour patterns. And I'm, I'm just wondering if this was the case between countries. So Italy seemed to be doing lockdowns, therefore Spain started doing lockdowns, therefore the UK thought, oh, everyone's doing lockdowns, started doing lockdowns. Sweden being a quite notable exception, of course, and we've looked at the fact that Excess deaths aren't higher in Sweden, although they did panic at the start of the pandemic in a different way by, in my view, over uh, emphasising the importance of palliative care at far too early a stage. But, you know, were, were, were countries basically copying each other into this bizarre form of international folly a deux? I don't know, but, but it's really quite bizarre. But now we're learning it's based on the interventions that were taken were based on weak evidence disappointing let's hope things are far more evidence-based in future because there does seem to be plans for future pandemics and public health emergencies uh, unfortunately we'll leave that there for now uh, thank you for watching